Hey cruisers, welcome back to Cruise Report Cruise Reviews. We've recently returned from an 11 night sailing aboard Silver Sea Cruises brand new Silver Ray. And that was our 146th cruise and our 18th sailing aboard a Silver Sea ship. Now, Silver Sea did invite us as members of the media to be on board the ship so that we could cover it for our website and for our YouTube channel. Now, if you have not been to our website, we do have a daily blog where we went through what we did each day. Since this is such a long review, we're going to split this up into several smaller videos, which will be part of a series. You can find links to each of the videos in the description of this video. We hope you enjoy our review. Please feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click that little button down below. Don't forget the notification bell. And don't forget if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for joining us. Now let's get on with the review. Let's talk a little bit about the ship in general. Okay, the ship is holds 728 guests. It's the largest ship that Silver Sea has ever had. I believe the previous Silver Sea ships hold 600 some, uh, maybe 596, something like that, like the Silver Spirit. Silver Muse, Silver Moon, Silver Dawn. It obviously is a little bit bigger ship, and we were concerned that it was going to feel crowded. Uh, there were only a couple of times where we noticed the crowds. We'll talk about that. But it is a very unique design, the ship. They refer to it as an asynchronous design. Never seen another ship designed like this. It is most obvious in the decks that have public spaces. You don't notice it on the decks where you have staterooms, but on decks where you have bars, lounges, the upper decks, the pool, you'll notice that everything is off to one side. The pool is on the uh, starboard side of the ship. You have loungers on the port side. And so it's, it's very odd to get, it takes a little getting used to, but it's actually pretty cool. It's a Pretty cool design. I think we the jury is still out as to whether or not I like it better than the previous class of ship. I, I, I don't think I like it better or worse. I think I like it. It's fine. It's nice. But we don't dislike it. It's just it's fine. There's a couple of things because of the way where they put La Terraza. La Terraza is on deck four rather than on deck seven or eight. Puts it closer to the water. So if you're sitting outside, it could be a little noisier than it would be if it was up on deck seven or eight like it is on some of the other ships. Other than that, there's some things about this ship I really do like better than the previous generation. But the other love those ships too. So no problem there. As far as decor, the ship is really beautiful. There's more artwork on this ship than I can recall from Silver Sea ships in the past. They seem to have spent a little more time with the decorations and the artwork. Just very, very luxurious feel throughout the ship. Everything super, super high quality. The ship was very, very smooth. The ride, it was probably the smoothest sailing we've ever had. Now, some of that obviously can be due to the seas. We just had good calm seas. We didn't have any storms during this trip. But this is the first time I can remember spending 11 days on a ship. And I mean, we didn't feel the ship move one time in 11 days. It was just very smooth, very quiet, very comfortable. The Wi-Fi uh, I believe they use Starlink, and it's the best Wi-Fi that I've ever experienced. Now, the first day, I had the standard Wi-Fi that every guest gets as part of their package. And then after the second or third day, we upgraded to the premium Wi-Fi. And the premium Wi-Fi is probably the best Wi-Fi I've had on any ship. Not only was it reliable, it was 
reasonably fast for a cruise ship. It's fast for a cruise ship. So I was able to even upload a video from the ship. Good job, Silver Sea, on your Wi-Fi and your Starlink connection. Deck 11 is the highest part of the ship that you can access, and it's basically just sun loungers. And I don't think I ever saw anybody on Deck 11. I went up there just to shoot video and take pictures, and I never saw anybody up there. So if you're looking, and, and, and the ship was full. They claim, I think there were 670-some or 680. I don't know the exact number, but they, they considered it a full ship. And I never saw a person up there. There's tons of sun loungers on this ship. There's lots of space, outdoor deck space. Now, deck 10 is where there's a lot of public spaces forward, very forward of Deck 10, you've got the Observation Lounge, very large, beautiful, expansive windows with a 270-degree view of the ocean. It's a little, it's bigger than the Observation Lounge as we've seen on other Silver Sea ships, uh, but there is no bar there. So unlike other Silver Sea ships, there's not a bar in the Observation Lounge, but there is the Salt Bar, but it's right behind the observation. So anybody that wants a cocktail, uh, it's very easy to get a cocktail in observation. You just go right back to the salt bar, salt lounge. Salt Lab is where they conduct the cooking classes, and it's on the port side of the ship, and that's where they do the hands-on cooking. We did that one day. Very fun, very interesting. Moving aft from the salt bar, you're going to come to the pool area, the pool deck, which is on deck 10. Pool is over on the starboard side of the ship, while all of your loungers and cabanas and other spaces are on the port side of the ship. Very beautiful pool. Now, if we move aft of the pool, you come to the marquee, which is where you'll find the the uh, grill, as well as Spacanopoli, which is their pizza kitchen. They've kind of combined the two into one kitchen now. But the marquee is this really pretty lattice kind of area with lets sunlight in. Very different than the other Silver Sea ships uh, that we've been on. Uh, they really did a nice job with the design. 
However, there was one little glitch in the marquee that I will let you know about. The first day we went to lunch there, uh, we sat out in the center area where the sun's coming through the, the uh, I guess you could call it a pergola. We sat down at a table. We didn't get seated. We just sat ourselves there. And we started noticing, uh, as we were sitting there, little black specks. And we were docked. The ship was not moving. It was docked at a port. And there's these little black specks on the uh, on the plate and on the table. We thought maybe it was pepper. Come to find out, when the Mater D came over, by the way, great job, JP. He came over to greet us, and he told us, no, it's not pepper. It's actually ash or something from the smokestack which is just forward of this marquee. Um, that is a fail. That is something that Silver Sea is going to need to address. But now, what he did is he graciously uh, found a table. They have tables that are in a covered area that are not in that open lattice area. Now, if we go aft of the marquee, which is the grill and the Spackinopoly. If we go after that, you come to the Dusk Bar. Now, this is a, a venue that doesn't exist on any other Silver Sea ship. And i got to tell you, it's one of the best features of this Nova-class ship is the Dusk Bar. This was the place that we would go every evening for our pre-dinner drinks. You sit out on the aft deck of the ship. There are some covered areas that are shaded. Some of it's in the sun, and you can just pick what you want. Port side, they do allow smoking. Starboard side, there's no smoking. They'd have a saxophone player up there at night. <laughs> And it was just an amazing place to watch a sunset, to have a cocktail, meet with friends. We made new friends on this cruise. There is a small jogging or walking track, and it kind of walks through the dusk bar. It kind of walks behind the pool area. I think it's eight laps, makes up a mile. Decks nine, eight, seven, and six are all staterooms. Now, one thing that's, or I should say suites, because everybody gets a suite on Silver Sea. One thing that's unique about this ship compared to other Silver Sea ships is there are no public spaces or dining venues on the same decks as staterooms or suites. It's The deck is nothing but accommodations. So I kind of like that I concept. I think that's a, a probably a very good idea, the way they do that. So if you move down to deck five, since deck six is all suites, that's the deck we were actually on, you move down to deck five, now you get into some more public spaces. If you go all the way forward, you've got the upper level of the Venetian lounge, which is kind of like a balcony area. You also have the Odium Spa, the Salon, and the Fitness Center. away from Odium and the Venetian Lounge, you're going to come to a boutique, and right across from that boutique, you're going to find the ship's very small casino.
So if we move back from the casino and the boutique, we end up at Dulce Vita, which is kind of the standard lounge on Silver Sea ships, what they used to call the bar. And then on the Dawn, Muse, Moon, Spirit, they changed the name to Dulce Vita. Very nice lounge. It's not as large as Dulce Vita on the other ships. of Dulce Vita, you end up at Silver Note, which is another dining venue, uh, specialty dining, but it's, uh, it's included in the cost. We'll cover that under food and dining. And then if you continue aft of there, uh, you end up at the Panorama Lounge, which all Silver Sea ships have a Panorama Lounge in the aft part of the ship. And the uh, it's an indoor lounge, but there's an aft deck, out an outer deck, where you can sit outside and enjoy a cocktail. Very nice, and very few people use that outer deck. Go to the aft outer deck of Panorama Lounge. The waiters will still come out there and take your drink order. Now, be aware, though, that on the port side of Panorama Lounge, they do allow smoking. On the port side of the Panorama Lounge, Next door, you'll find Connoisseur's Corner. And this is a little narrow area, but this is an indoor place where people can smoke cigars, cigarettes, pipes, whatever you want to smoke. They have cognac. It's a very classy, kind of old-school gentleman cigar uh, atmosphere in there. So they do offer that. Now, forward on Deck 4, you have the main area for the Venetian Lounge. This is the nicest Venetian lounge we've seen on any Silver Sea ship. Completely unrestricted views. There's no posts in the way. Great sight lines. Very comfortable seating. Every seat has a table except so that you can put your drink on the table, even though we never saw drink service. We never saw waiters coming around and taking drink orders in the Venetian lounge. Next door to the Venetian lounge, forward, Part of the ship is La Dame. Now, La Dame is the specialty dining venue. It is a there is a fee for eating in La Dame. It's kind of their French upscale restaurant. And then moving back from La Dame and Venetian Lounge, we have another boutique. Uh, and then you move back from there and you have the Arts Cafe. Now, Arts Cafe is different on the Nova class ship than it is on the other ships. Normally, it's at the aft part of one of the upper decks on this new ship. It's, it's right in with reception. There's the shore excursion desk right there. There's reception. It's centrally located in the ship. It's a little bit larger, I would think, than the other arts cafes. What's different, one, one thing I really like is they have this nice long work table where you can sit in the morning. I would sit there every morning, work on my computer have my coffee, get my blogging done. I really like that table. And I will talk a little more about Arts Cafe under food and dining. Now, if we move aft from there, you have Kaiseki. Kaiseki is the Japanese restaurant on board. aft on deck four is La Terraza. Like I said, it's lower down on this ship than it is on the other ships. And La Terraza is the ship's buffet for breakfast and lunch. And then in the evening, it becomes an Italian bistro.
Now, deck three is interesting because on deck three, just underneath Dulce Vita and Arts Cafe, you have what they call the shelter. This is another bar. It's only open in the evenings. But honestly, I don't know if I ever saw anybody in the shelter. It's almost like nobody goes there. And it's I would say the most bland, if there is a bland area on the ship, it, it just kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I, we didn't go in the shelter. It's, it's really sort of a champagne bar, but they have everything in there. If you move all the way down to deck two, that's where you find the tender embarkation area. There's also a uh, ping pong table or table tennis down there. And uh, that's where you embark tenders and they also have uh, your water bottle refilling stations. Or if you just disembark the ship, that's where you'll get off the ship. Now, this Nova class ship has two banks of elevators. There's three elevators in each bank. One of them is forward on the port side of the ship. And one of them is, I'd say, really midship. And it is on the starboard side of the ship. We And the, uh, the elevators are all glass, so you can see out to the ocean as you're going up and down. We found the elevators to be very fast. Uh, very e It's always easy to get an elevator, and they worked flawlessly. We had no issues at all getting from one deck to the next using the elevators. And they do go all the way from deck 2 all the way up to deck 10. Hey cruisers, thanks for watching this Silver Ray review. Other videos in the series, make sure you check out the description of this video for links to those videos. And if you have any questions or comments, on our Silver Ray review, please put it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to click the little subscribe button and that notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when we come out with new videos. And if you enjoyed this video, do me a big favor and please give it a thumbs up. That really does help our YouTube rankings. Thanks again for joining me and until next time, smooth sailing.